previously on RimWorld. see the extent of his pyromania later on. <laughs> uh, it just makes me chuckle every time I watch this. Okay guys, so welcome back to episode three of our Rimworld No Guns challenge and I unfortunately lost <laughs> a little bit of the recording that we had previously um, in the middle. Don't worry, no guns were used in the creation of that part of the video. Um, but it does mean that we've kind of jumped forward a little bit in time, which is no bad thing. So we are starting off with uh, a raid um, and they've got quite a few guns uh, where we took on different people. Uh, there were a few quests where they have sort of said, you know, oh, you have to uh, fight people, which is going to have a massive impact as we're kind of playing through today. So we're going to see a few things um, come together. But this raid was fairly easy to do. We took a little bit of damage, but nothing we couldn't handle because at this stage, even with guns, we outnumbered them. So when we outnumber them, it does make things a little bit easier in that we can very easily uh, surround them so this one was quite funny to me there were the two people and the one I was most worried about actually wandered into the uh, the, the bugs nest which was brilliant um, we finally got electricity which you may be able to see just based on the layout of my camp um, or my colony sorry um, where I kind of set it up so we're using power cables in the walls we finally at a point where we could set up a cooler and start freezing food kind of for the long run and we're starting to look into solar panels because I just find them a little bit more reliable than the wind turbines which from time to time you know they do uh, have their <laughs> their problems don't they you know when the wind isn't blowing or you don't have enough colonists to go and cut the trees around them so they start slowing down or stopping altogether um, and I was really just kind of investigating you know what what do I want from uh, kind of my research at this stage because I've got the mod packs and again I'm using the kind of vanilla expanded stuff primarily um, I wanted to make sure that I could, you know, you know, that I started researching lots of different things. And I wanted the complex furniture just because I wanted shelving, which I find is really useful for storage. So this is where things took a small turn. Um, you can see that these two guys came in and they were part of a quest to protect um, Spinach, who is kind of one of our, our new characters so we had spinach and all of a sudden we had these two guys spawn in another two guys spawning down the bottom and for whatever reason I decided now is a good time to split our forces so we split the forces um, which is not necessarily a bad thing uh, you know they started coming in started trying to burn my potato crop which I did need um, but I started moving them in before they could start getting shots off basically. While they were distracted setting the fires, I was able to get my characters in, but they're still not brilliant with the melee and I haven't actually crafted many kind of hand-to-hand -hand weapons at this point, which is something for episode four. I know I am definitely gonna have to start thinking about if not episode five. So, you know, we started fighting it out we sriracha went down and things started to take a bit of a turn here because obviously all my melee fighters were now essentially out of the fight which really wasn't great um so this is going to be an interesting episode today because you're going to see some some pretty fun stuff uh, some pretty fun carnage so yeah so we managed to just about clear these guys out when the, bear in mind we had the other two but we also now had a third person jump in now thankfully we took out these two but bear in mind it took 
three of my colonists. One was critically injured. The other two would not be able to be in this fight. And then Soy started using his flame bow. Now these guys, I thought we were doing okay initially. We were doing well. They were getting quite a few shots in with the bow. Uh, Salt was taking quite a few shots. And really, had I been smarter, I would have kind of sounded the retreat and or set up a trap kind of maze or tunnel which is something that we'll look at in a bit so we took out this guy the flame bow has its uses as well as its negatives uh you know it starts the fires which is great for those kind of flawed enemies making sure they're taken care of for whatever reason i didn't send pepper back uh and then they sent the these kind of like the last two so pepper no, I did send Pepper back, but Pepper started putting out the fires because it's on their kind of priority list. So as Pepper was putting out the fires, these guys are having a full-on firefight. And you can see at this point, there is not a single colonist who hasn't taken some damage of some kind. So luckily, Soy got in there, managed to get a few shots off, and then everyone just started going down so we took quite a lot of damage um if i'm honest and we were still being fired at so i had to re-enlist pepper just to keep us going that little bit longer but then she went down and you know everything kind of started going wrong the flame bow as brilliant as it is causes problems in that fires now start to spread now I thought, oh, we'll save Salt because, you know, we don't want to lose him. However, I potentially should have used this opportunity to run, right? It was a bit crazy. So, yeah, everyone kind of starts running back and, you know, I wanted everyone to rescue everyone else. But unfortunately, you know, well uh yeah a lot of people were downed i didn't have enough kind of medical beds didn't really have i mean i had enough medicine but it just you can see everything just started popping up major break risks medical emergencies you know everyone needs rescue uh, these guys i mean hot sauce literally passed out as he was putting out the fire which I'm sure you can imagine doesn't end well. We lost Soy. Soy died, wasn't rescued in time. Ketchup is down at this point and all things are to play for. This was kind of a really tense moment in the game because I wasn't sure if this would be kind of the death of the run. I was kind of playing over in my head, do we restart the run? and try again which is something i may do if i'm ever kind of you know i ever lose or come up short in a run so it's something to consider um you know i tried rushing out to rescue people but really at this point the fire was spreading to the base and to be fair you know we had spinach still on their feet but spinach is also afraid of fire so every now and again they'd obviously be putting out flames uh you know at this point we'd lost salt we'd lost pepper we'd lost soy we we'd lost so many it was only a few moments later when the heavens opened and essentially saved the the run for us like the damage was absolutely severe like catastrophically severe like we lost four of our colonists we still had uh ketchup sriracha and um spinach and you know we started kind of putting everything together to bury them uh you know salt and pepper had a baby they then didn't have a baby that's what you'll probably see at the top i kind of cut a lot of that footage because it was pretty pretty miserable pretty depressing and I didn't want that so and, and then just when I thought things were getting better we then suffered yet yeah, kind of another raid which spinach and ketchup dealt with I gave one of them I think ketchup the flame bow which 
Thankfully it was raining, but in the end I just kind of got rid of that bow because it, it just started causing more problems than it was actually worth, right? But yeah, so Ketchup went down again. I mean, Sriracha rushed out to the rescue, really, because he was so wounded and it was just a matter of, you know, can he help? And he's quite a good melee fighter, so he was kind of the, this, this, like the turning point in most of these kind of melee fights so he managed to kind of jump in help and as you can see that i mean the base is this way you don't build a base out of wood right um i've been able to cut blocks in the game for a while now i really should have jumped straight in and used that um i also started cancelling grow zones because i realized that you know spinach is yeah we needed the rice we need food stuffs but when it came to kind of like uh, growing cotton and that, it just wasn't worth it at this point in the playthrough. Um, just because, you know, we had to get back on our feet. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff that isn't being done because we had two of our colonists in pretty precarious position. My hope was that spinach could maintain planting and food production so that at least we would be able to maintain our food when we've got everything fixed and repaired um, you know we we've managed to repair most of it as you can see I started setting up a trap area and I'm gonna do this down the bottom as well because ideally what I want to do is I want to be able to thin a lot of these out um, when I go back into episode 5 because I do a lot of the gameplay and then do a lot of the editing and recording it into the episodes but when I go back into it I think I'm going to have to get rid of the door because I find that things don't come through. And I don't know what Ketchup's traits are, but he walked over the trap. You guys tell me if you find this quite a lot when you're playing. Like, do, do your colonists end up walking into traps quite a lot? Because Ketchup has done it like three times in three episodes. And it is just unbelievable at this point. Um, we had a lovely new person join us. Um and they kind of jumped in and we'll kind of see how they do they're called ranch uh, and you know they're okay they've got an exceptional crafting skill which helps us a lot and obviously they were quite a good builder so you can see we could start to actually start building up the base although i am slowly i think going to move into the mountainside just based on the fact that you know it, it's probably going to be safer and i can eventually repurpose this whole building that we have at the moment into some sort of trap area that we can use to kind of catch people out right um, because the raiders at this point I think should be weaker now just based on the fact that we lost um, we lost a lot of colonists so I think they shouldn't unless we accept a quest otherwise I don't think they should be too strong now um, you know and as I said like the inside it's nice and easy to maintain yes I think insects can infest it but again those infestations will probably be close to the size because I'm playing with the classic storyteller right um, I'm not playing with uh, what's it called like Randy Random or something like that. There will be playthroughs with Randy, but I am really new to RimWorld, maybe 50 hours. So this is something that I'm slowly finding my feet and figuring out how to play. And you know, it's been a good laugh so far. Doing a no guns challenge when you have, you know, you you can't really even play the game <laughs> to, to at the best of your ability. It's quite. Um, quite good and you know I later found that Ranch has like fragile or something as one of his abilities which just really sucks so he has a really good melee ability but then will fall down if someone hits him once so we ended up having to start training him up in shooting instead and giving him a, a bow because he was a good crafter I wanted to make sure that we kept him relatively safe because if you can get good gear in this game it does seem to make a big difference so if you've got like you know good bows and things like that it, it helps with kind of like the amount of damage you do so we ended up getting attacked by a mad bison 
And then this happened. So, Spinach went into a murderous rage and I was too slow to react. Now, I thought, in my infinite wisdom, that once Ketchup was down, she would leave Ketchup alone. Um, she did not do that. So, you can see here, I tried to get Ranch to kind of arrest her and for whatever reason I just couldn't so spinach then killed ketchup which really didn't help um, and we had this mad bison outside and I literally just wanted to do it where we left it outside to go to sleep so it wouldn't be mad anymore. So we had to start being a lot more tactical. Not everything could be a fight, if that makes sense. It, you know, sometimes we had to, so I ended up creating, I don't know if you see it in this playthrough, but ended up creating like a home area, which whenever I trigger it, they stay within the confines of the walls and the house. So they don't actually lure in any mad creatures if it comes to that, because we just couldn't always take them. So yeah, so there goes Ketchup, um, and that was it, until next time really. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are, are as invested as I am in my happy little colonists. Thanks for tuning in guys, I really appreciate the support.